Hello and welcome to this West Yorkshire football show, Huddersfield Town Review. Um, the Terriers have drawn 1-1 away at Stoke City in what was seen by many as a six-pointer uh, and it's ended in one point. Uh, I'm your host, Stephen Downs, um, town fan, and I'm also with my uh, my brethren, town fan, uh, Callum. How are you doing, mate? And uh, what's your thoughts and feelings straight after the final whistle? Uh, away at the Bet365 Stadium. I'm not bad, mate. I'm just uh, just wondering about all the things that I could have filled that 90 minutes with other than watching that game of football. Cause no, not impressed, then. It's not, I'm not unimpressed with the performance. I thought we, we dug in quite well and we played quite well in spells, but the way we, you know, the way we've sort of sat off Stoke there in, in such a crucial game. Again, like we were doing on Good Friday, you've got to sort of question some of the fight in, in these boys if it's if it's really there. Hmm. Obviously, we'll go back to the beginning and the, and the start of the game. I mean, how were you feeling going into it? Obviously, we haven't really done a, a, a podcast for, for a few weeks on, on town, but um, there was a disappointing... Draw, uh, sort of lost, sorry, against West Brom. And then, you know, we go into Friday against Coventry and I didn't think we were going to get anything out of that and we ended up didn't. Um, so today I was hoping that we were going to get more than a point because of the way results keep going against us. I've, you know, I've no, never seen really a relegation fight like it where so many results week after week just, just go against us. And, I mean, we'll, we can come on to more broadly uh, about the Championship relegation zone, but... Coming into this game, Callum, I, I thought, I know other people didn't think like this, but I thought we needed three points, mate. Yeah, I mean, look at look at the table. It's it's painfully obvious that we need three points in, in every fixture that we've got between now and the end of the season. Is that going to happen realistically? Probably not, but you wouldn't expect the teams around us to be consistently picking up points. At least that's how it feels and where we're the ones that are sort of not doing, whereas in previous years, other people have dropped off. We've started to find a bit of form and that's not happening this time and that is really worrying. Yeah, and and the other thing is with the way the game went, I thought Stoke started off the better, to be honest. We found his way into the game. Um, the goal by uh, Bojan came at a really good time. I mean, you know, they'd had the free kick that hit the bar. That was sort of their only real chance, to be honest, of that first half. And when we got the opportunity to to take a strike, um, we did. And, and, and Bojan took it really well. I mean, it was a clever... Uh, well, R- uh, Rodoni took a shot, obviously. The keeper saved it, but then went to collect the ball. And it, it made its way back to the edge of the box to Headley, who... who did a, a lovely little pass into the box to, to Borges and who finished it well. And I mean, it, it was a good goal, wasn't it, mate? Yeah, it was. And, and I'm happy for, for Borges. And, you know, he's he's finally off the mark there. And, and what a way to get off the mark. You know, it were a good finishing, good... Well, I was listening to uh, listening to it on Sky and they used the classic line, good feet for a big man. And that's exactly what it was. You know, it was good. He dug the chance out of um, a lot of pressure and... And like you say, for what is he, six foot, six foot what? He's, he's a big lad, isn't he? So to get the ball under that control in a tight space, he's done well. Yeah. But then I thought we I thought we sat off then in a time where we could have really started to, to, to go hell for leather. You know, you're one up, let's get another one. We did what we've been doing in recent weeks and just sat off, let them come on to us. Yeah. And they've I mean- got... They've got power that they can introduce from the bench, like Sayed Haksabanovic. He's just yeah. a big unit and he'll, he'll make things happen, and he did. Yeah, I mean, obviously, going into half-time, I, I, you know, people were saying it was a it was a good half. Now, I, I wouldn't say it was a spectacular half. I, th- I think it was a better half than the performances that we've previously been putting in in recent games, for sure. Mm. Um, but, you know, in a game that's so vital like this one, I can't... You know, I, I didn't think it was a terrific half of football. We, we've got the goal, Fan, fantastic. You go into half time and you hope that we'll come out in the second half and, and we'll really try and go get the second. And, and for the first two, three minutes, we did. We did do that. But then all of a sudden, a ball gets played over the top and it comes out to their 
uh, winger Hoover, who who dips inside after the uh, the weakest challenge I think I've ever seen from a footballer in Sober Thomas, and curls it into the top corner. Now it's a great finish, but the defending is horrendous, and and then you're back at one one, and and you've got to start your game plan all over again, Cal. Yeah, it's exactly that, and it's it's that position we've been in week in week out. You know what. We're saying that this was a good half of football, quite a good game of football, but that's only in comparison to some of the dross that we've we've put in yeah. previous to this. You know, when we've not lost all perspective in saying that that on its own was a good game of football. It wasn't, but it was better than some of the stuff we've seen. Yeah. But there again, classic mistakes. You know, we're, we're, we're getting known for these mistakes now. Not tracking your man. I know Sauber Thomas isn't a defender, but he's played in that position for long enough this season to know, and you should know anyway, stay with your man. You don't yep. let him cut on the inside like that. And you give that Hover an inch and he'll take a mile. Yeah, but you, but, but for me, Cal, you don't even have to be a full-back. You just have to be a professional footballer to put well, in a tackle in. Do you know what I mean? It's like he dangled out a bit of a leg and then he's off balance and that's it. Who, who was given too much space. And in fact, two minutes later, he was given another opportunity to shoot and, you know, he, he didn't take it on that on that opportunity. But it, it, it just shows that we don't learn from lessons, do we, mate? We, it, it, and it doesn't matter what fixture we're in. We just don't learn. No, and it's... It's frustrating because if we can see the problems, obviously the management team, all the sports scientists and analysts, they'll see the problems as well. So why are they consistently making the same mistakes Yeah, in different fixtures? You know, we need to shore up that defence. If we go a goal up, great, but let's not fall asleep now. Let's not rest back on his laurels. And we're consistently doing that. And with this running, you can't do that against teams that are trying to dig themselves out just like we are. No. Well, what did you make to the lineup? Obviously, no Hog because he's got a shoulder injury. Uh, no, um, just trying to think now. Bergsog was on the bench, of course. Karoma was sent back to the bench. Um, no, uh, just trying to think of the lineup. Um, Obviously, no Tom Lees because he's injured and it looks like he's going to be out for the rest of the season, maybe. Um, so, what did you make to the lineup um, going into the game? Again, I thought it was a fairly good lineup, but I'm confused as to why. And we were talking about this with Zach the other day. Yeah. Um, why do you put Coroma in a game like that? You want Coroma on there causing problems, making things happen. It seems a bit strange to me to have a good outlet like Josh Coroma just sat on he's been rested for Millwall. I don't know. But mm. but you know, has, has he shown enough, mate? Has he shown enough in the last couple of performances to warrant the start? Obviously put Pat Jones in who, you know, tried and puffed and puffed but didn't really get anywhere. For and for a young lad it's it's difficult being in a relegation battle. I get that. Um mm. but I, I don't know if Coroma's warranted a starting position, mate, if I'm honest. I don't think we're in any position to say that any of the players that are on the pitch, bar maybe Michael Hellick, has actually put in enough good performances to this season to say, right, that's that's cemented in. You wouldn't you wouldn't swap them out for anyone. Yeah. I don't think we've had that consistency in the lineup because of the injuries and, and whatnot to say, right. These, this is a starting eleven, and bar injuries, bar suspensions, bar whatever, this is what it's going to be. It's not been like that this season. So now we can't get to this point and go, well, he's not been good enough. So, you know, let's let's leave him out. Forget that. We need three points. Get him on the pitch. Yeah, yeah, I, I get that, I do, and I do get that. But I just feel like you know, Bergs all came on today. Obviously, went off in a huff, really, against Coventry. And, you know, didn't add a lot. I mean, he had one ball where he could have squared it to Healy. And <laughs> goes for the most impossible angle to score ever. I mean, if I were Reese Healy, I'd be absolutely... Well, he was, he was fuming, but I'd well, still be fuming in the changing room, mate. I hope he is, and I hope a lot of them are giving him some, some stick for it, because time and again we've seen it, he goes for the shot rather than the pass. 
Yeah. And what that's that might just be his makeup. He thinks that he can get it, but time and again he's gone for it. How many times has he scored? Not not enough to warrant going for it. Mm. So you know, it's now it's not a time for for an individual. We need to be playing as a unit. And if and if Reese Healy's in the middle, admittedly, it'd have been a bit of a challenge to dig out the pass across the face, but less of a challenge than to try and score at that angle. You dig him out, you try and find your man, and and he's not done that. He's gone for spectacular, and it's not come off, and it's a massive wasted chance. Yeah. Um, thanks to everybody watching, by the way, uh, live on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. And cheers for uh, all your comments coming in. And please uh, put a like on the video and give it a share. And and also, like I say, you can make a comment. We've had a few comments, uh, Cal. We've got one from Blue Terrier saying that the fitness is not good enough uh, and hasn't been since Fotheringham left. Well, no, but I don't think <laughs> I don't think Fotheringham helped that. To be fair, I don't. I don't. I think it's. We've had a lot of time where we've not been fit enough, and probably since Wagner and Corbram, to be honest. Um, another one here from Alex, who uh, who says that uh, Jackson's mouth's better than Headley. Um, and again, Blue Terrier says um, that Karomi thought Karomi was lazy against Coventry. Um, so cheers for your comments, guys. Like I say, uh, keep making those comments and, and shove a like on the video and a share. But, I mean, he makes a good point about Headley. Um, you know, I, I, I do like Jaheim Headley, and, and, and I think he, he, he does get up and down the pitch well enough. He's, he's a real athlete and, um, you know, he, he's good at times. But I think, again, with all young players like what Jaheim is, he does have properly bad games. And today might not have been his worst, but, again, the quality just wasn't there, was it, Cal, from him? No, and, and I don't want to... I don't want to pull the I told you so card, right? But I remember what one gonna? First, <laughs> I'm gonna. One of the first ones we did of these, I said, these young young players going into a relegation scrap, they've either got it or they've not. And now maybe we're starting to see that they've not. You need consistent, strong performances, and we're not getting that from certainly from Headley. You know, and I don't put that down to them. You know, they're young players. They've been chucked in a championship relegation battle. They're doing what they can, but what they can is not, not good enough for, for what we need to be doing. No, and, and and it is a pretty young young team, really, apart from the back, you know, with Heli and Pearson and, and Nichols. Mm -hmm. You know, Spencer's only, I think, 20, 21. Uh, Headley's 21, I think. Um, Rodoni's 20, 21. Matos is only 19. Kasumu, I think, might be a little bit older, to be fair, but still not anything past 25, I don't think. Um, yeah. Jones is 18. Uh, Radulovic, I, I think he's a bit older. Uh, and, and obviously, Thomas is still 23, 24 himself. So, you know, it's not exactly a side that's stacked with massive experience, but what we have got is obviously relegation experience. And... I, it, to, to be honest, Cal, I, I mean, I, um, and we will, I think, go into this a lot deeper when Zach's back on the show and, and hope he's all right and everything. But, um, you know, in terms of the fight that's there, I think what, you, we, what we see, Cal, from other teams is that, that other teams are fighting. And I don't see where the fight, I don't think there's any fight left in some of these players, particularly the older lads. No, I'd, I'd agree. And maybe that's because... We've had such change at the club, change of managers, change of whatever, that it's difficult for them now to get behind con near constant change. And that I would understand, but you're playing for the shirt. You know, you, you're a player of the club, no matter who the manager is. Yeah. And you give absolutely everything. I mean, look at the difference between Sorba Thomas under Corberan and Sorba Thomas now is chalk and cheese. Yeah. I, I, I think... You know, when pe people say they're not putting effort in, I think they are, but the quality, the, the lack of quality is not bearing through against the effort that might be put being put in. And that's the that's the problem for me. And I, I just think a lot, some of these players now, some of these lads are, are just tired from fighting relegation every, every season. And, yeah, and, and to be fair, us as fans, I think, you know, you look at what we've, 
done in the last 10 years, we've, apart from 2015 under Chris Powell, and that even that wasn't like generally uh, sort of really safe, but that, that's been the only safe season for the last 10 seasons, Cal, where we've not been fighting for anything. And I just think the whole club's tired in terms of the people that's been here for quite a long time and, and obviously the supporters. You can't really say that about Kevin and uh, and, and Jake Edwards and Mark Cartwright because they've only just come in. But I just, yeah, I just think people are tired with it. I think you're right, mate. And I saw something earlier this week. I've just got it up here. So... This is not to get all Statman Dave on you, but um, <laughs> so in the last 12 seasons, including this one, we've pay, played 528 league matches. We've won just 162, which is 30%, scored 589 goals and conceded 786. Yep. So we failed to win in 366 of our last 528 games. And we are statistically the worst EFL side in terms of goal difference over the past 10 seasons. Yes. And we've not even been in the EFL for two of them because we were in the Premier League. I mean, that's yeah. a shocking stat, isn't it, mate? You know, you think about some of the absolute dross that's at the bottom of League Two. and It yeah. puts into perspective sort of where we're at. Have we, have we fooled ourselves into thinking that we are an established championship side? Or, or should we be, rightfully, yo-yo in between League One and League uh, Championship? Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, Gareth K, obviously a big town fan. Cheers for your comment, mate. Uh, two points dropped, Steve. Um, Stoke hadn't taken a, a point after going behind at home all season. I mean, you know, that's a shocking start as well, isn't it? You know, that just puts into into bear what we've been saying about the lack of quality from us and the fact that 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 is a stat really that tells you how poor they've been all season but to me that tells you that they've got a bit of fight about them and and sort of we haven't really yeah yeah definitely i mean stuff how many you could find stats like that about this field town you know we seem to be picking up more and more as time goes on uh, such and such hasn't won at home in how many matches? Well, the bad stats. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're picking them up. Well, right, the bad stats. <laughs> hasn't won on the road for four games. Come and play us, they win 5-0. You're like, what? It's, un it's, it's unbelievable, honestly. I just, like I was saying to you, when, um, when we were sort of just after the game, if we do go down, if we don't come straight back up, yeah. it's as simple as that. And that's the real worry now. You're sort of looking past no, this relegation no. um, Yeah. 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 Um, cheers for Steve as well. Obviously, um, main presenter, or one of the main presenters of the, uh, of the show, um, he feels the big mistake uh, was getting rid of uh, Warnock and letting more have too much time. I think yeah, that's uh, that that's something that we we can speak about um, again. But I agree, Carl. I mean, you look today, you look at the results, and and I'm sure everybody's seen them now. But I'll, I'll get them up just in case. And and it really does mean that you know things are sort of going against us. But we can't rely on on results. I mean, Birmingham won, Preston nil. That's horrendous. Um, Cardiff beat Coventry. That doesn't mean anything for us. Borough two Wednesday nil. Uh, that was probably the only game. Oh, well, apart from Plymouth nil, Bristol won. They were the two fixtures that went in our favour. Rotherham two, Millwall one. But I don't even. I don't think Millwall are in this relegation scrap anymore. Really, um, Sunderland one, Blackburn five. I mean, who would have predicted that? That wasn't. That's definitely gone. Uh, not in our favour. Swansea nil, QPR one. I mean, that's a terrible result for us too. Uh, and the other one was West Brom 2, Watford 2. So, you know, there's only two fixtures there that have, have gone in our favour. You look at the league table now, um, I'm sure we've all been looking at it anyway. Rotherham um, survived for another week on in 24th on 33 po um, 23 points. Sorry, Wednesday, second bottom on 39 points, minus uh, 33 goal difference. We're in the relegation zone or... At 23rd, uh, 22nd, sorry, minus 21 goal difference, points 40. Then above us, you've got Plymouth, 
on 41 points, minus 10 goal difference. Uh, Birmingham on 42 points, minus 17 goal difference. Millwall in 19th on 44 points with a minus 15 goal difference. Stoke on 45 five points now, minus 16 goal difference in 18th. Blackburn in 17th on 45 points. QPR in 16th on 46 points. And Swansea in 15th on 47 points. So, I mean, it's it's still tight, Cal, but, you know, the, the, the results today, because of the way they've gone, it means that some sides like, you know, like Millwall are now four points ahead of us and, you know, Stoke are five points ahead of us. And there's only, what, six games left. Yeah, I mean, look at... Look at that Millwall result. Anybody of any club would look at that with Millwall being sort of next up for us and go, right, nice one. They've just dropped points to the bottom of the league. Right, let's have a, go and have a swing at them. And, and I'm looking at it thinking, be the most town thing ever for Millwall to come and turn us over now after beating bottom of the table. So I, it's one of them, isn't it? It's... Everything's so tight and so close. You can't call it, but if you look at form, we are not in a good way. Well, we must be the worst in the form table at the bottom side. Maybe Plymouth is worse than us. I don't know. Could Rotherham maybe be propping us up? Well, yeah, but I'd like Rotherham are out of it anyway. They'll be be relegated next week, won't they? They should have been relegated this week, but... You know, yeah. so so I think out the sides that are battling down there, probably Plymouth are the probably in the form table are worse than us. The thing that's keep propping us up and not being the worst team is obviously Rotherham, but then the draws that we're getting. But draws are no good. I mean, people are saying that it's a good draw away from home, but I don't see how sat here. Right. I don't, if that result had come, if we were mid-table and you go to, to Stoke and you draw one all, yeah, great result, no worries. Yeah. In the position we're in, it feels like it's not a good result because it was billed as a six-pointer, we've come away with one. Yeah. It's just not, it's consistently not what we need. And at some point, as luck's going to run out. Why don't we go for it in games, Cal? Why don't he go for it? I, don't, I mean, it was worse under more by a country mile, but what I don't understand why we don't go for it in this position. I mean, what we're hoping for, to, to keep drawing games and hoping other, other people lose, because that's not going to happen. I think maybe the mentality is if we go one up, then, like today, they get one back. We sit often because we don't want it to get any worse. Yeah, but that ends up being it ends up being a waste of game. I mean, literally, we wasted yeah. today, haven't we? It was one of the most boring games of football I think I've ever seen. Oh, I don't know. Rotherham, Rotherham goes go somewhere to beat it. I think. Yeah, no, that's true. But <laughs> why, I just don't. I don't know why you wouldn't in in our position where we are and how tight the league is. Take it by the scruff at neck because what. Here's one for you. What would the table if we'd have won today? Yeah, we'd be out with relegations, or not we? Uh, if we'd have won today, we would have been on 42 points, so that would have been we'd have been above Plymouth. Plymouth would have dropped in if the results had have all gone like they had. Uh, but we wouldn't have gone above Birmingham because they've got a better goal difference by us of say plus two or three, so we'd have ended up being just outside with and Plymouth. Then- Sitting outside, you're looking at his next couple of games, and you're like, right, we've got to use that to for some confidence. Yeah, um, I mean the next the next game is Millwall at home. Hmm. Uh, away, then we've got Preston away, Bristol away, Swansea at home, Birmingham at home, and Ipswich away. I mean, so two let's just away go games there, Preston and Bristol, historically grounds that we cannot win at. And Ipswich. Well, you call all three, really. I mean, when when I know we won in 2016 with Schindler, but I agree, Bristol City, we never really win at. Preston, I mean, that 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 could be one of the worst games of the season by far because it, it t- tends to be a turgid display. 
and Ipswich on the last day. I mean, they're still fighting for the title, aren't they? So, depending the on how the afternoon goes, I think it could yeah. have a bearing on. They've got Southampton this after, haven't they? Yeah. You know, if they if they could be up by the time we play them, that could be a massive boost for us. Mm. Because they oh. might, I don't know, field. I, I don't know what sort of manager Kieran McKenna is. If he's the sort of bloke to play the kids when there's no to play for, then that plays into our hands brilliant. Because we might yeah. just be able to scrape past their kids. I mean, you've got obviously Millwall next week's massive in it, and and they're going to come, and you just know it's going to be an absolute battle. It is, it's going to be a ba- it's going to be a ba- football. It's going to be an awful. I agree. It's going to be an awful game of football. Um. Like I said, two away games then, I don't expect to get anything out from. So we're going into the last three games of the season with possibly, hopefully, three points against Millwall. And then the two home games, I, I can't I can't believe that, again, we're in this position where we're talking about two home games in the last three games of the season, where Swansea, hopefully, are on the beach. They've got no to play for. And then Birmingham, I mean... <laughs> You know, the fans will remember. Was it, was it two thousand or was it? I can't remember when. The, there was a, there was a game that Birmingham won and it relegated us or something, didn't it? I can't remember. Um, I was oh, only about four, yeah. four when it happened, but basically, Birmingham have got a have got a history with us about getting a result, and it it I think it relegated us in. Maybe the midnight. I can't remember. To, 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 if there's any town fan out there that remembers that game, that's older than obviously me and Cal. Please tell us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's just crazy that we're in this position again where we're looking. We're not even looking over our shoulder anymore. Yeah, we're just sort. Of, it's a strange feeling because before, maybe before Good Friday sort of felt like the fans could be galvanised and got up for the fight if we put in a couple of good performances over Easter. Yeah. And now we've had the two that we've had. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I walked out the ground on Friday, Cal, and I was the most depressed I've been all season. Normally, I, I walk away and I can analyse the game and think about it, but I just thought, I, I didn't see any fight. And I think and, and other I think teams that, have got fight, and that's the that's the worst bit about it. Last season, we knew we won off. You were always going to get fight. Yeah, but I think that's now translated into the stands. I think people are totally apathetic yeah. about what's what's going on. They're just we're going to these games. We're watching them. We're seeing us not perform well or scrape a point or whatever and it's just well you know we're probably down anyway mm. I um, it's the lack of goals as well that worries us me obviously Healy got his first the other day Bozan's got his first today but there's just no goals in the team unless Hellick gets a header and Pearson gets a header we're knackered aren't we that's it that tells you everything you need to know that we're looking to two central defenders to score goals like if Hallett gets one more goal before end of the season it'll be his 10th and I think Pearson's on is it 5? 5 five, yeah yeah and, and I think I, I, I presume he's our second top scorer well no one else has got that many <laughs> not that I can remember no so that's that says everything you need to know about how much of a threat we are in attack hmm I mean, what obviously I think we're, we're trying to do another show on on Wednesday where we can get Zach involved. But what what are your overriding feelings going into the next week? I mean, obviously we've not had a chance to hear what Andre sort of thought about the game afterwards. But you know, it, it's it's just I get this feeling like there's six games left, and I want it to be over, Cal. I, just, I want to know either way whether we're up or down and then get on with it because I just I can't. I'm really bad for thinking that, but even today I was thinking if we're going to lose, just hurry up and lose. Yeah. <laughs> like just get... in, um, what is it in the in the Simpsons where Homer goes to baseball and he's like, hurry up, hurry up and lose so we can get out of here. 
Yeah, yeah. That's we me are... going to town now. I'm just let's just get it just get it over with. If we're going down, let's just go down. Yeah. If we're staying yeah. up, let's let's be quick about it. You know what I mean? I mean, let's obviously we, we don't know whether we're gonna be up or down yet, but um say say we stay up by God's miracle. What, what, what like how many of this squad stay and how many of them go? And uh, the similar question is if we go down, what 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 do we do? I don't think I think in both cases it won't be a question of us getting rid of the players. I think most of the players after the couple of seasons they've had of just fighting and fighting and fighting will want to leave. Yeah, I mean so so whatever way you think we'll have an entirely Probably new squad. I think we'll have a couple of players that stick around, um, but I couldn't tell you exactly who. No, but I think there I mean, will be wholesale change because if we go down, our new owners won't want to spend a lot of time in in League One, you know, and, and as they shouldn't. But even if we stay up, significant investment is needed in this squad to bring it up to anywhere near. A decent standard. Yeah. I uh, I just want to thank James here for this comment. It, somebody has come in, Cal, with the answer. It was 2001. I, th- I th- thought it was 2000. 2001, we had to have four results going in our favour to stay up. Uh, and all four went against us. And that's why we went down. Um, oh. And, yeah, so I, I, did, I thought it was uh, around 2001. Yeah. Well, well cheers, James, for that. Um yeah, I mean, it's just a nightmare, isn't it? Like, so Birmingham do have a bit of voodoo over us, to be quite honest. Well, the I only thing Barry... that I remember from late season Birmingham is when we played him under Wagner and uh, we at Tony Mowbray complained to the FA for us field in a weakened side, said that oh, it yeah. affected What's the man- integrity of the competition. What? Well, where was he manager of then? Was Birmingham. It they were Birmingham. No, he, he, no, he won't. He won't Birmingham. He's not been Birmingham manager who, who twice. Then? Who, who, I don't know who the manager was then, but whoever the Birmingham manager was at the time, yeah, complained to the FA that we'd um, affected the integrity of the division because we'd already got playoffs. <laughs> and they were fighting to stay up. So, ah, uh, yeah, love it, don't you? I mean, um, obviously, thanks very much for. Uh, Jonathan has comment here, Bergzog's a good player, but he has to hang his head in shame uh, on the two occasions that he had. Yeah, I mean, that, that that that's the fine margins, isn't it, mate? You know, he makes that pass. I'm pretty 100% sure, or 99% sure, that Healy will, would have put that ball in. I'd have understood it as well if he'd not, if that were one of the first times that he'd done it, but he's been consistently selfish in a fair few games now. And you're just like, someone's got to be telling you to square the ball in training. Someone's got to be telling you to don't go for the spectacular, go for the pass. Mm-hmm. So why aren't you? Why aren't you doing it? Uh, James, J- James has uh, come back and said that we've now made him feel old. Um, you know, I, <laughs> right. Right. we we apo- we apologise, James, but. Uh, Still the same. Um, yeah, I mean, to me, you look at the squad, and we can go more into depth with this with, with that mate. But to me, you know, if we, st- I, I think whatever happens, I don't, th- I, th- I don't think we'll have Nichols here next next season. No. I can see the only players really staying are the youngsters. To be honest, Spencer, mm-hmm. we're going to do well to keep hold of. I think Ed will we'll do well to keep hold of Spencer. Yeah, I, I can see somebody probably trying to come in for Radoni. I can see Wiles staying. Uh, Healy, I think, will stay. You know, but I, I think somebody will come in for Thomas. I just think that the better players that we have, um, I think, will be off, um, whether we stay up or, or go down, to be honest. So, yeah, well, I mean, let's not know. kid ourselves. Let's not kid ourselves into thinking that Jack Radoni and Sauber Thomas as agents are not frantically typing messages to try and get them out the door. To each other. To, maybe to <laughs> each other, yeah. I don't know. But, you know, that we should be ready for quite a lot of change because the players won't want to stick around. I think Brighton Wright will still be the manager. I hope yeah. so. What, if we go down? I, I hope so. 
I don't, I, don't, I can't see him staying. He won't want to manage in League One, William British football. That's another one, though, isn't it? That's that'd be another manager, another change. I mean, put it into context. Since twenty, since twenty twenty two, we've had five permanent managers and seven overall, if you include caretakers. Since twenty twenty two. Watford get a terrible rap for their turnover of managers, as can't be too far behind, and that's flown straight under the radar. We we get somebody called us Watford Light the other day on uh, down at the back, which I thought was quite funny. It's not <laughs> wrong. It's not wrong at all. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it's bad in it, mate. I mean, you know, you look at the managers we can Corbaram, uh, we've had Palash, Fotheringham, Worthington, Palash. Warnock, Darren Moore. And now Brian Writer. Yeah. And look at right. And we're wondering why we struggle to get any sort of consistency. Yeah. That's different managers with different styles, different ways of coaching, and the players are just supposed to adapt every couple of months. Yeah. No and wonder there's we no have any consistency. They they don't know how to play. No, and there also there's no consistency with re the recruitment of players either. So you you know, you're bring somebody like Bojan Rodulovic in, in January. Who's played in the Finnish league, scored a lot of goals, but it is the Finnish league that play on AstroTurf. There you go. He's, he's in, a, in, a, in a relegation battle. Is what? It's took him till April to score a goal, and granted he's not been playing, but that's because he's not been up to speed or he's, he's been injured or not good enough. Yeah, we've had Bolker, who's come in and played probably one and a half games, Max at, at fitness level, um, you know, who looks a decent centre back but hasn't been able to keep fit. Healy has been injured and been out for the last year, basically, with injury. Um, and uh, oh, Matos, who... You see, like, what's your opinion on supporters who are scrambling like hell for Matos to play, right? What what have you made to the last three performances, or two performances, sorry, since he's been in the side? I think he's a good player, and he's only a young player, but, my God, he spends a lot of time on the floor. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. But I also think that he's he would be an excellent footballer in an excellent football team. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I think he needs them players around him to help him look good. Mm. Whereas <laughs> he's he's been suffocated by crap football at the minute. Yeah. You know, he's he's trying to play into feet, he's trying to play these little intricate passes to players that have no idea what he's doing basically. Mm. I think he, he he's half the player that he could be because of the situation we find ourselves in. Mm. Um looking at uh, obviously going into next week, I think we'll try and like I said, we'll try and get a show for Wednesday where I think we're gonna discuss more topics um than just, just reviewing and previewing games. Um obviously there's a lot of discussion around season tickets at the moment, um and, and sort of wider club things that are happening. So um Callum, is there any other thing that you would like to say on the uh, on the show today, reviewing today's absolutely fantastic, amazing one one performance? Um, I'd just like to underline absolutely everything I've said that's negative towards <coughs> football club by saying that I will be there against Millwall. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's that's it, mate, isn't it? That we're proper fans and we go to games and we'll always stick by them, but they don't have to make it hard to, to, to stick with them sometimes. Don't, don't. I find it easier if you go in expecting to be made angry. It makes it <laughs> easier when you eventually do get angry. Yeah. Do you know what as well? I, I don't know whether you go through this, but like in the when we when we were in the promotion season or, or like we were going for the playoffs and we'd have a bad performance, I'd get really angry and cross about it because I knew we, that we were better than what we played. Yeah. I don't get cross now because I just expect us to put in a crap performance. And That's it's what like what town does to you, mate, because that feeling is normal yeah. in any other football club. Yeah, yeah, it's true, isn't it? And and we've just come to, like I said before, it's total apathy. It's just, oh, well, we're shit. Oh, yeah, of course we are. <laughs> that, that's town. You've done a gaz. You've done a gaz. You've sworn there. Uh, <laughs> we've, we've sent it to swearing. 
<laughs> at least I did it at the end. At least you did it at the end. Um, well, thanks very much for everybody taking part in today's show. Uh, cheers, Cal. Um, I'm sure that we'll both go away now and sink a bottle of whiskey and review our Huddersfield Town support in life. Um, I'm sure that we'll be back with another West Yorkshire football show soon, um, whether it's a roundtable discussion or it's me, Cal and Zach, uh, back to discuss all things Huddersfield Town. There is a Legion United special coming up late tonight with Jason Booker and Stephen Brown. Obviously, they play Hull City in what is a massive game at the other end of the championship table. Oh, we've but for now, oh, we've won. Oh, we had a great time at the football. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> But for now, it's been me, Stephen Downs, it's been Callum Scott, and it's been Huddersfield Town 1, Stoke 1. We'll see you next week. Cheers.